Hey everyone, this is Mike with Play More Games, and today uh, we are going to be taking a look at GTS Race for Bestone, and we are going to play the learning scenario, uh, which is called Wilt's Waltz. Uh, it takes place on the 1300 hour turn of December 19th, and it ends at the conclusion of the 0700 turn on December 20th. Alright, so let's get started. A couple of things. Um, I am not an expert videographer by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm also not an expert GTS player. I've played it a lot, but uh, it's been a while, so I might make some mistakes. Additionally, um, especially for the first couple of division activation shits, um, I won't show you everything just to keep counter clutter uh, to a minimum. Plus, I'm going to have to kind of reach around the, cam uh, the camera tripod here, so it's going to get a little awkward. So, um, instead, we'll probably just skip for highlights. So, uh, before we get started, a uh, couple of things to go over. Uh, there are two formations of Germans, you can kind of see them just off to the side here. There's the 26th uh, Volksgrenadier. This is, uh, I think that's like the bicycle designation. Um, anyway, they start north of the Wiltz River, but not adjacent. They cannot, by scenario special rule, move south of the Wiltz River, so their influence on the battle is limited. Uh, the main Thrust will be the German Fallschirmjägers and the 15th uh, Fallschirmjäger Regiment. So we can see we still have our light blue Fallschirmjäger units, even though they're not quite, they're not the same as they were in, say, Operation Mercury. They start to the south here in uh, 6131. They come on along this road, and the objective here is this city hex in Wilts. So the Americans get the better part of the 110th 3rd uh, Formation, 110th Infantry Regiment, um, to hold Wilts. They also get support from an armored vehicle. This looks like some sort of armored car. Um, a couple of AT guns, mortar section, and some engineers. The engineers deploy in these hexes here. The infantry deploy around these hexes here. So, the Germans simply have to take this hex by the end of the game to win. Uh, so now that we've talked about um, what you have to do to win, I'm going to pause here. And when I come back, we'll take a look at how I chose to set things up. Back in a flash. Alright, so just so we have a little bit of connective tissue here, let's go over the setup. So we have the 26th, they are set up to the north here, they're just out of frame, north of the Wilts River. Their purpose in this scenario is fairly limited since they cannot actually push towards the city. But we can try and hope to tie down at least one of these engineer companies if we get to move before them. But the main thing they can do is if they get up adjacent to the river, this terrain is here is village and is not blocking terrain. So we can get line of sight on the Wilts Hex. And we have two artillery pieces here, which will face the host of negative modifiers, but one of the things of the GTS series, some may like it, some may hate it, is if you roll a zero, it's always a success. And when you're rolling zeros for artillery, it's a step loss. So, you always have a 10% chance of a success, and no matter how strong your attack is, you always have a 10% chance of a failure. Additionally, um, they can be used, even if they don't get a solid hit, they can still drop uh, a barrage marker, which is pretty useful as well. 
Okay, so I learned some lessons from the first time I played this, um, and I deployed my units aggressively as the Americans to the south. So we have our armored car, we have our big AT gun here, um, which can really put some hurt on the Germans. In the Wilts Hex, we have an infantry company and a scout company on top of it. Uh, our mortar company is hiding in the woods here. Um, so basically we're trying to make it as difficult as possible to get to the Wilts Hex. Right now we're only showing one open adjacent hex and we're going to look to rectify that as soon as possible. Um, okay, so we're going to get started and the first the first chit is going to be the 15th Fallschirmjäger Infantry Division and because that's going to get a little messy I'm going to do that entirely off camera um, uh, because since they're entering this is the kind of thing that would be a lot easier to show on Vassal um, once the module is published. Uh, since they're entering, they're going to be in column, but since it's the division chit, what's going to be important to remember is on your first activation, you cannot move into an enemy fire zone. So this AT gun here is going to be able to put a fire zone 1 to, it has a range of 4. Um, so it can't see down this, this spine here. Like, so we'll say you can see one, two, probably into here. It couldn't see this hex, um, but it could see this hex. So this is an enemy fire zone, all of these. So our first unit to move into here is going to have to be on a second action, because a very important and often overlooked rule in GTS is on a division activation shit, your first action cannot be to move into an enemy fire zone. So what are we going to do? Uh, well, well, what we'll do is we'll spend one unit on a second action to move into an enemy fire zone. And remember, there is no opportunity fire. There is no opportunity fire when you move into an enemy fire zone. So we can move into that hex without wor getting worried about drawing a shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to move a unit here to spot and then use one of our artillery pieces to start dropping barrage markers here and here so then the rest of our infantry companies can move up but I'll let you know how that goes in just a moment back in a flash okay so here we are at the end of the 5th Fallschirmjäger Division activation uh, so you can kind of see that uh, we were able to hammer the artillery into position and drop some light barrage markers on uh, the um, the heavy weapons teams that were guarding the south of Wilts. Uh, now, this has allowed many of the Fallschirmjäger units to advance without having to take second actions to move into fire zones, since units under barrage markers have a fire uh, zone that's reduced to the six hexes around them. Mortars do not have fire zones, and the infantry companies don't have range, so uh, they moved as far as they could move, but unfortunately, due to the terrain, um, woods, even in column, is two hexes, um, and the restrictions on having one unit in column per space um, has created kind of a log jam. Now, the good thing is, is that we were able to get our, our artillery deployed, but these infantry companies, um, they're going to have a difficult time uh, moving up and uh, getting into position. So uh, we're going to have to hope for some pretty good um, uh, combat results so we can clear our way to Wilts. Alright, now the mortars did get a lucky strike here and they got a one result. Um, which is a suppression test, but since that unit is pretty critical to the Americans' defense, we didn't want to risk um, failing the suppression result, so we spent a command point to pass it. So at this point, it's important to note that the Americans currently only have two command points. And luckily for the Germans, they pull the formation activation for the paratroopers. So... Um, <laughs> All right. Well, I will I will do some of the mortar attacks so you can see those, and then I'll move the infantry up off screen. All right. So 
we have this AT gun here is going to fire directly ahead on this unit here. Now, um, here are the modifiers. They are in a town, which is minus two, so they're going to be at a two. And they're at a range of two, so that's another minus one. So this will be rolling on a one white, so 20% chance of success. And we rolled a three. So that's not going to get her done. Um, this mortar section here, uh, similar modifiers, except it'll be a minus two. So we can only hope for a zero. That's a miss. Below that, we have a stronger mortar. Uh, actually, we have artillery. And that's going to be also a brown zero. And that time we hit. Uh, so, that is a one step loss to this unit, and this unit has a mounted side, so we will grab a step loss marker, which further reduces its uh, firepower, so you can see that the step loss marker makes it so, let me see if I can refocus, yeah, the step loss marker makes it so, uh, it's a minus one to firepower, so now a five white. But more importantly, it's still buried under that barrage marker, so it's a minus. So it's down to a four with a troop quality of three. Um, okay. So then we have these here. So we'll fire the three, which let's just check one, two, three, four. Is at the max range, so again we'll need a zero. And we miss. And then we have the four, so we'll roll for a company bonus. And we miss the company bonus, and then we'll roll for the attack. And that time we got a one, which means I'm going to have to count it up, but I don't think. So range is one, two, three, four. So that's a zero, minus two, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, they were low odd shots, but we did get lucky and do one step loss. Alright, so I'm going to pause it again here uh, while I take care of the uh, infantry. Back in a flash. Alright, so now the German is banging on the outside of Wilts. Um, not much happened, although we did get a, another... Uh, we got a suppression here. And the uh, Allies did try to convert it. They didn't want to spend another chip, but they failed to convert it to a cohesion hit. And this is why I was trying to do most of this offline, because I just make a mess. Okay. Alright, let's pull the next chip. Let's see. We have the American Direct Command. Well, here's the deal. We only have two of those left. And we want to be careful, so we are probably going to pass. The reason I say be careful is we don't want to end up in a situation where we're facing German assaults without command points. So, alright, here's the next chip. It is the German direct command. The Fallschirmjägers still have a three command points. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can finish this stack off. So we are going to shoot with these two units. So we'll start with this one here. Okay, so let's roll for a company bonus. We got a nine. That's a miss. And then we got a four, which is not going to get the job done. So then we'll shoot with the other paratrooper. So we need a five or less for the company bonus. That one we got a zero. So we have a six minus two for the terrain. So four. We need a four or less. And we got exactly a four, which is a cohesion hit. Okay. So 
Germans are down to one command point. And things are looking even more grim for the Allies here. So they're suppressed, they're under a barrage marker, they have a cohesion hit, they have a step loss, and they haven't even gotten to fire yet. So, all right, let's see what's next. Uh, we have the other German division. Okay, so they get three command points. And I will do them right now. And what we're going to do is we are going to use this is happening off screen. We're going to use some of those command points. Actually, let me just move this up here. Da da da. Okay. So we're going to use a command point to fire the mortar here. All right, we're going to fire on this unit here. So, does it have a second step? No. So, it's a 3 minus 1 for the range, 2, plus 1 for the defense value, 3, and then the terrain itself is, actually that one is a village, which is a minus 1. So it's a miss, but we drop a barrage marker on top. And then let's uh, do the same with this hex here, with this unit. So it's another command point. That's a mess, but we drop another barrage marker. Okay. <clears throat> then all three of these units will pass and move up. Okay, so now there's uh, two chits left, the American Division and the American Formation. So let's see what we get. Whatever we don't get now will be first next turn. Alright, so we get the Formation chit, um, which certainly we won't complain about that. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take this guy here and rally him from suppression. Now we can do that in an enemy fire zone and since he's in command it's automatic. This is an independent unit and since it's attached it can activate here. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this guy here and we're going to fire at this stack here and we'll see if we can make them pay. So, they have a two firepower, and both of these are minus one, so it's a one firepower, and then we'll see if we can get a company bonus. And we're going to fire at the Pioneers, the top unit. We miss the company bonus, but we do roll a zero, which means we deal out a step loss to the Germans which is good. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to fire this mortar unit, so 1, 2, minus 1, and uh, so they're at a 1, that's a miss. Alright, the two units in here are going to try and trench, or dig and improve position, so we'll do the uh, we'll do the G company they get an 8, so they'll get a men and work marker and then the recon gets a 9, so they'll both get men and work markers And this is where the stacking starts to get a little nuts. Okay. 
and oh there we go all right this engineer company they're going to move into here because we're going to want him to dig some entrenchments this company here is going to try and improve position which they get that's everything that I want to do. So that is the end of turn one. So we do go to the night turn, or the next turn, um, the 1500 turn, and there's not much we have to do for cleanup. We just pick up the barrage markers, The Germans should have one. I didn't even bother putting it out because this, this was going to happen. And we are ready for the next turn. Technically, the Germans could choose to put in this chit instead of the uh, the Falschemagers, but there's really no point in doing that. Um, so, the first chit on this turn will be the American Infantry Division. Um, but what I am going to do is I am going to end this video here, and uh, we'll pick it up um, hopefully tomorrow, um, or maybe later today. But um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, concerns, uh, please let me know. If you noticed any mistakes, do give it a shout out. Um, but basically, we're going to have to see... And I could have, I, what I could have done, uh, yes, actually what we'll do is we'll retcon this to move here. So this guy will roll for opportunity fire. And he makes his opportunity fire. There's no company bonus on opportunity fire, um, but he is moving fire zone to fire zone. So he gets a plus two. So he's rolling a six modified to 7, so he gets a 0, uh, so that's a cohesion hit. Alright, um, and the reason we want to do that is I want to occupy as many of the hexes surrounding wilts as possible. Um, just to make the Germans, like the Germans have the firepower to clear those units, but they don't have the actions to you know, waste. So, uh, they need to get to Wilts. Wilts has a ton of units in it now. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. When I played this, the Germans won, but I had a poor allied deployment because most of my heavy units were along the town because I didn't really look at where the Germans set up. And then I was like, kind of like, ah, oh, well, you know, um, limited intelligence and everything like that. Like, if you're the Americans, you could very well conceivably have thought that the main attack would be coming from here, north of Wilts, and then you find out, you know, you have paratroopers in your rear. So, uh, okay, well, thanks for watching again. This is Mike, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.